Uh, okay. Uh, breaking news. I, I know we're recording, but uh, that, that photo is fake. Aw. Oh. Darn. I wanted it to be real. <laughs> Has there been an internet celebrity yet the size of Markiplier where their nudes have leaked? Okay. Um, and intentionally, and I'm gonna be real serious, Dan. Yes. The level of research you're doing on this right now, like, look, we have, have to to know. Know. we have to know. Yeah, how, I mean, aside from the guys at like Rooster free. Teeth, like, apparently, everybody's a freak at Rooster Teeth. I, I don't uh, know if you guys ever saw what's happening there. I'm like, what the? Ooh. There's like a new fucking scandal every week. I think we should get started. Oh, okay. Hot yeah. Hot let's, dog. Let's do it. It's a special episode today because we have some B roll guests Hot and some dog A-roll, indeed. And some A roll people missing, but it's all good. We yeah. have got Tennyson. Oh, hello. Ray. I am a horrible Nazi. Oh, good. That's just what we need. Representation. Oh, <laughs> Representation on our podcast. <laughs> Well, you know, we're out without the Europeans, so. Yeah. Danimal? I'm just stewing in disappointment from that Markiplier picture of his hog not being real. Oh, my oh, God. God. You know, it right. was so, I wanted it to be real in my heart. It's a day of national mourning, for sure. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm too straight to understand. I think I'm going to keep it saved in the photos on my phone for now. Just <laughs> yeah. in case. Just in case. You know, how would you just feel, Ray, if some female celebrities boobs leaked and then you found out they weren't real i you know i guess here's the problem with that uh cav is that i'm not a normal male in that respect You're so male. well fuck you uh, <laughs> they, they need to have fur on them is that the idea yeah i was gonna say like i mean there's like what if what if crystal from Star Fox is nudes <laughs> leak, and then you find out those weren't real that those oh, were actually just an animated oh, that, figure that, that, from a video that, that, game oh man this is suicide material you're talking about dan <laughs> no this is a this is an extension of the donkey Kong question all right oh, <laughs> all right let's keep doing on introductions isn't okay, that okay. Okay. That's penis size dan wouldn't you want to know what size donkey kong's dong is I'll bleep the fifth on that one. Move on. Moving on. <laughs> okay. About to mute everybody. All right. Uh, and it's me, Kava. And then we have Lieutenant Amazil. Hello. How do you do? So here we go. I we am bad. A little more furry this time around for some reason. Uh, yeah. But uh, we are going to watch today a video from Danimal's recommendation. Because uh, oh, this yeah. is, you want to set this up for us? Um, yeah, so this is a person that does videos from the UK, Jamie Dodger, which I think is a play on Jamie Dodger, the snack, right? We all agreed on that. I guess. I don't know anything <laughs> about these foreign things. Oh, okay. I, I literally showed up because I thought it would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Well, there's been some... I don't speak this, this British language. I don't, I don't know I... what they call things. Look, I know, I know. Uh, the Queen invented the language I speak, but that doesn't mean I know anything about her. Well, there's been some big things happening in the UK, basically. Like, the, so, so last year in April, there was a project started called the CAS Interim Report, and what the CAS Interim Report was was it was something that was going to look into um, sort of the overall picture of gender care for youth in the UK through interviews with patients, interviews with parents, interviews with experts, observing the clinics, observing the practices. And that report got released a few months ago. And some of the key points that they pulled out of it was looking at the rapid increase in number of children that were asking for this type of support from the NHS, you know, um, kind of what the population is that's coming forward. So that's unclear as to who these people are, what's a commonality between them, um, what, why, what their outcomes are. Like that's not being tracked as well as it could be. Um, that there wasn't, um, that there was a total lack of consensus about the clinical response for gender care for youth. You know, these are all things that the report discovered. So they made some recommendations. Um, and one of those was the Tavistock being shut down for a little bit while they figure this thing out. And that's the center that, that, that Cara Bell was suing, correct? Yes. Uh, you know more yeah. about Carabelle. Yeah, so Carabelle, I think it was last year, 
two years ago. It was it was a while ago. It was not this year. Kira Bell, who is a young woman who transitioned through the Tapastock Center, went on puberty blockers, went on hormones. She ended up detransitioning and suing the Tavistock for giving her hormone blockers before she could consent legally. Court actually ruled at the time that th that she was correct, that she was too young at the time to have properly consented, and hmm. that puberty blockers had to be treated as essentially the beginning of medical transition. They couldn't be treated as a pause button, the way the, the Tavistock was trying to argue. Mm -hmm. it, didn't she? It, it was like only a few short shot sessions, too. Like, I think it was even yeah. short, like what the what the W path guidelines are, because W paths say at least six months of persistence. And I, I think she got it yeah. in less than that. Yeah, she she got it fairly quickly, like 30 minute sessions. Yeah. So that got shuttered for a little bit uh, indefinitely. I don't think it's opened back up. Yeah, I but think it's still recent. Closed. Oh, yeah. And like probably about two weeks ago um, is when the NHS put out um, a public consultation on guidelines for transgender care for youth. Hang on. Let me pull it up really quick. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Like, is that, that's my thing. The, the one thing actually about a lot of this stuff that I want is like, if, if they're going to go through with this and like, I can't stop them, then I would at least like long-term studies to be done about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's going to be one of the recommendations from the NHS. So it, it, based on what was found in the CAST report, um, the NHS is recommending some uh, a new phase. And phase one is going to have proposed changes that are substantive. One of those changes is um, the composition of the clinical team. And basically what that means is that they no longer want these silos to form of these people that are just within these gender fields, and that's their only group that they're conferring with for these kids. But they need to include more experts from multidisciplinary fields, so like autism experts, um, neurodisability experts. Um, oh, so in other words, probably, they want them to actually run a robust gambit for... Exactly, mm -hmm. and the clinics must be led by a medical doctor. Okay. That's, a, that's, a, that's another substantive change. They and then doing this from the beginning. Like, I know, I know, right? It was and, all very I, ideologically driven. Oh, look, I make, I so, make a lot of memes about being transphobic or whatever, but like genuinely, like I'm not. I just like if you're gonna do this stuff, just like I've I've wanted to be like you know as rock solid as you can be about it, like you know, because yeah. this stuff is. Like once you start going on hormones, I, I don't care what you've read, what you've listed. That's permanent, long-term consequences that you're mm -hmm. signing yourself up for. And then the other change they made was on social transition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's some other changes. Um, I probably won't get into those. It, not that they're not important, but just we need to move along. But yeah, so so social transition. There's a clarification. A reclarification of what social transition is. And it used to be sold as something ah, it's sold, that sounds so bad. It used to be suggested as something that, well, this is watchful waiting. Um, you know, you can you can let them socially transition now and see how they like being in this gender. And then, you know, if they don't like it, then they can always transition back. And it's, you know, it's not a permanent thing, it's just a social thing. Um, so that would include they, like changing your name, changing your pronouns, yeah, changing how as you a dress, kid, as a kid, yeah, yeah as a kid, which so I don't think they're putting in medical legal or psychological, just like essentially role play, yeah, uh, role play, and um, that's going to be re clarified as to an active treatment rather than a neutral treatment because it was found by, and I think Stensma actually talked about this in a few of his studies. In the 2016 study I'm thinking of specifically. But anyway, he pointed out that it's very difficult to like detransition from that social transition for a lot of kids. So it's basically a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you do social transition, then they're far more likely to persist. Whereas typically you would see a persistence rate of like uh what is it, like 87 to 50 percent, or I think in Stensma studies he says seven to twenty-one percent persistence rate. And with social transition, they saw upwards of a 95% right. persistence rate. So that's a huge gap. 
what it essentially boils down to, it seems like every intervention that's done decreases the desistance rate. Every or, intervention towards affirmation of yeah, the Every affirmative state approach ends up with a 95% persistence rate. Which and is I'm very sympathetic. Unusual. Right. And I'm I know that people don't like hearing that. And there's a lot of, you know, they'll throw a lot of things at you about like, oh, well, that's not the real desistance rate. It's totally, you know, that's just manufactured. It's because it's flawed in this way, this way, and this way. And it's, I don't know, it's it's based on multi-decade research, multiple clinicians. Like there's like 11 or 10 studies in a row. And it's by people like, I don't know, R Richard Green, who like wrote in the original DSM and all that. Like these, these are like high people. Like Ken, uh, I think Ken Zucker is a controversial one, but um, I think he had a W path. Like these are, these are people who have really looked at this stuff and they have achieved a lot and they were high up in the field of gender studies. Well, gender medical studies. I mean, I don't, I don't think that these are bullshit studies. Yeah. Yeah, and the, and the and the methodology is sound. I mean, they they come right out. Like there's a there's one for uh, Stensma 2013 that gets pointed to as being flawed. I think the uh, it's not like amazing atheist tweeting about it or something. And one flaw in the study, and the study's not really meant to study the rate of persistence or desistance. It's to study the characteristics of children who persist and children who desist. So it's a given that the desisters exist, but he counts like something like 127 kids, um, and he counted 80 desisters, and um, the rest were persisters. But of the 80, I think like 33 of them didn't reconnect with the study afterwards. Like they had stopped going to the gender clinic, and they didn't follow up with them anymore. And they counted them as desisters, and that's pointed to as a flaw in the study, but. The thing is, is that at the time that that study was done, there was only one gender clinic in the Netherlands where they were doing the study. So there was mm. no other gender clinic where the kids could go. It's if they not, no longer yeah. sought treatments, they yeah, weren't seeking treatment good. anymore for their gender issues. And also, this was like clinicians that have multi-decade years experience with this thing. And they, you know, they know that when you're not seeking treatment anymore and they do follow up with you in the future that you have desisted. How many were in the original study? How many like total? Uh, in that, it, it, and once again, the 2013 Stensma study is not a study of the amount of desisters or persisters. No, 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 no. It's, I get, it's I get about, that. It's about the characteristics, but yeah, yeah. But just of the sample size they took, there was what like uh, you said, uh, 127 total out of, and those were called from like 240 something. So they 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 took 127 from an initial pool of 240 something, I believe. It's so obviously small, and that's a lot. Pretty much all these studies are going to be. Small. That's a lot of the studies, yeah. But but I, but the reason I brought that up, honestly, is just to bring back to the desister point, because even in the preamble in the introduction of both the 2011, 2013, 2016 study, he he references all the studies on what the persistence rate is, and the persistent rate seems to be, you know, pretty low. It's it's it's, say, it's, they, it, 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 it's never been the majority, even in the highest estimation. It's never been the so majority. There's like, I was gonna say there's 120 something to start with, and they lost 80 initially. Yeah, it was uh, that's like 36, 37 percent. That's actually not terribly oh. uncommon. I think we talked about this before. With that was studies. Yeah, studies will lose 63%. like they'll lose like half the people that they start with. People right. Just so, lose contact, so yeah. or they're they're not interested. They yeah. So they initially lost direction. sixty. Yeah, they initially lost sixty three percent. But I've and never, lost. I've never seen a study, even of all of them, where persistence is the majority expected outcome. Yeah. And then of the remaining ones, they lost an additional thirty. You said, uh, from like just loss of contact. Uh, from the eighty that dropped out. Um, I think 33 they never were we able to uh, respond with. Oh, from the 80 that dropped out. Oh, okay. Yeah, from the 80 that <laughs> dropped out. So they counted them as desisters. Was I not clear uh, about that? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, no. I, I, no. Okay. no, I'm sorry. I, I misheard it. I, I thought it was like, oh, they lost 80 initially. They were just like, yeah, we're going to desist. And then like from the remaining 47, an additional 30. Yeah, dropped but, off. That's what I thought, but no. Before I mean. before I got off on that side tangent, we were talking about social transition. And then the last thing that I just wanted to talk about in the NHS public consultation, puberty blockers. Mm. So let me just, let me kind of read it. Here, let me see. Okay, so building the research protocol for endocrine interventions. 
Um, and this is direct. They, they actually, in the NHS public consultation, they actually quote the CAS report directly. So this is a quote from it. Uh, the interim service specification reads, consistent with advice from the CAS review highlighting the uncertainties surrounding the use of hormone treatments, NHS England is in the process of forming proposals and prospectively enrolling children and young people being considered for hormone treatment into a formal research program with the adequate follow-up into adulthood. With a more immediate focus on the questions regarding GNRHAs, I always get that. That's how it comes out wrong. That's uh, that's uh, puberty blockers. On the basis, NHS England will only commission a GNRHA in the context of a formal research protocol. The research protocol will set out eligibility criteria for participation. So, yeah, that's they. You only get puberty blockers if you meet uh, the criteria for participation in this research protocol. So that's gonna that's pretty big. Down a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Wow, so they like they just like so that means just anybody in England like they basically they have to read the criteria for uh, for the research project that they're going to run, and it says underneath it in due course NHS England will share details of this work, including plans for how stakeholders and the public will be engaged and consulted on eligibility criteria. So that's how they're going to select. So, so in other words, they're. They're going forward, but they're being cautious about how they. Uh... Let me guess. Somebody had a problem forward, with this. Uh, yeah, the, they're going forward only with the understanding that it needs to be researched more before being applied broadly to everybody. Yeah, but, and uh, here's... let me guess. Let me guess. Somebody has a problem with this. Well, yeah. There's. I mean, I haven't seen much pushback on it yet. Honestly, I'm going to be honest. A lot of the big trans organizations that I know about, like Mer like we'll learn about mermaids, uh, Stonewall UK, okay. that'll be in the videos we haven't even touched yet. But um, they seem to like not even be responding to it. it like, it's uh, weird. Uh, how, how recent, how recent was this? Like, this is from happen. October 20th. Yeah. So this well, is about two weeks. That's ago. why. I know, but. It, it, PR, here's, they gotta do PR spins. They gotta like be really sure about what they say before. I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's so so it's open for public consultation until December. That means that you can supply public comments. Uh, uh, let like let me be clear, right? I when I say, oh, they got to be careful about what they say. PR spin. I'm not saying they're going. Like, um, that's not me saying. Oh, they're obviously going to object. To no, I'm saying when you're like one of these like major organizations like this, you can't just jump as soon as the report comes out. Yeah. Yeah. You, no, you I got have, you. Yeah. They maybe they do have uh, objections to it. Maybe they don't. I don't know. I'm not putting words in anybody's mouth when I said it. I just I'm saying clearly they're not going to be have a response to it yet because they're still looking over the study itself. Um, because there's a there's a the part of the reason that they're actually you know what fuck it let's just get another video. I've been talking too much. <laughs> Cut this part out. Yeah. No, because I was going to say uh, with I all felt that, educated. With all that ground too. being laid. Now we're going to watch this video that came out. Oh. A few weeks before the cast report came out, right? Oh. Yeah, how, oh. how many months ago was this video? This was uh, not long ago. So we're going to be encountering from this uh, YouTuber the evidence transphobes ignore, and it's also going to refer to science. Okay, so three months now ago. that we've learned some science, we're going to learn some more science. Hell yeah! Oh, the boy. real science. Do I, I guess trans science. science that transphobes <laughs> ignore. <laughs> This Ooh, okay. this video is from August third, twenty twenty two. Yep. And you said the Castrum report was from October twentieth. No, the NHS no. report is from October. Uh, the, oh, the oh wow, report okay. Came out, I want to say a while ago, but then the NHS changing all that stuff. Yeah, that that happened very recently. Yeah, Cas uh, Cas okay. report came out back in March of this. Oh, year. oh, so this this um, video would have been post that. Yeah, this video is post mm -hmm. that even. But before oh, the and, and no. I'm saying I'm saying none of them fucking read it. Yeah. None of them fucking read it. They didn't. It's real funny. Why would they? Why would they? It's Reading was for sitch. Okay. Why would they? They they know science. No 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 no. You side. guys. No guys, you you guys are being you're being too dismissive. You see, look, you get you're insulting their intelligence. Clearly, they opened up the study on PDF, hit Control F or F3, and then typed in. Uh, trans, and just looked through all the parts of the report that uh, were favorable to their view. That could be it, yeah. 
I've seen that kind of. I'm gonna be honest. Like I, I'm certain that like if <laughs> based off of what you said, if there's like heavy pushback or whatever against NHS's like reasonable response to the report, it's probably because these people, like you said, didn't read the whole thing, but they did read parts of it that they liked. Um, it, yeah, maybe. I haven't, like I said, I haven't seen a lot of response to the NHS report yet. But not even I YouTubers. didn't see any response to the fucking CAS report. Like, and that yeah. was back in March, and I saw like zero talking about that. And you know what? In the oh. next video, I'll talk a little bit more about that because the next video requires a little bit of setup too. Oh wait, Ooh. wait. But I'm yeah. sorry. You might be right. You might be right. They just straight up up didn't read it then. Yeah, that's that would have been hard. I'm not even sure they were aware of it for some of them. And these are people that are like purporting to be like, hey, like we need to be out here like being like really informed on these issues and like I'm going to inform you and all this stuff. And just like this is probably like the most important thing that's happened in this whole debate. And he, like I barely heard a peep about it. Well, look, it wasn't uploaded to the uh, the main directory of the server, okay? So I didn't get out of sure. the hang on. <laughs> right. I know. It's just... <laughs> I'm kind of, I know, because I, I care about this issue. I, I, and I care about it from both sides. I care about it from, obviously, kids getting misdiagnosed, look, look, which is a big of- issue. And I care about it from the point of view of the kids who do generally have gender dysphoria that's going to persist. But I, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just looking at the evidence and the clinical records and all that stuff, and I just can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, absolutely. And look, and as dismissive as I am with saying that uh, comment, I'm gonna be real honest. Even, especially with a lot of these YouTube pers- personalities, and sh- like, look, like people, people like to think that they're super informed. They're very informed. Nobody puts about as much effort into this as like th- these people actually doing like the studies and stuff. So like, there's just there's a ton of info out there, and they're just gonna not be aware of it. Or Even or they're like, or they're getting it filtered through something else where it's oh, yeah, not, yeah, it's not yeah, quite like, what the I mean we see that all the time. That's that's the real crux of it though. It's like it, you you heard like when you watch this stuff through YouTube, you're hearing about it through like like what like an eighth level filter or something. It's like yeah. somebody has heard it from this person, that person has heard it from that person, and then like somewhere down this line. There is like the actual expert who read this and then explained it to somebody else. And then it comes right, out of the sewage line, just like what <laughs> this show is. It's going to come out the Danimal and Ray show. I can already feel it. Okay, we're going to. All right, all right. You guys got to jump in more. I love that show. I'm all right, know. let's go. Let's go. No more talking. Transphobia on mainstream media. <gasps> How shocking. Hey, Spuds, it's Jamie. Welcome back to another video or your first video on our channel. I don't know, but welcome either way. I'm very glad to have you here. I hope you're going to enjoy this video. Uh, is that the right wording to use? I don't know, because today we are looking at some transphobia that was recently on UK television. The news. Sky News, to be precise. Recently, the founder and director of an organization called Transgender Trend appeared on Sky News. This was once again an example of trans people being spoken about and being spoken over by those spreading transphobic rhetoric. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, oh, God. I'm, glad, I'm glad somebody else paused because I'm not going to let this guy, this, this guy, well, clearly he's got the English accent, right? But like, mm-hmm. Glass he, he lives in. Wait, am I allowed to he, say that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, so he's he's in England, right? Like he's in the UK. In Turf Island, as we like to say. Why is he wearing a Michigan shirt? Mm. Yeah, that's popular. Is he wearing a Michigan uh, shirt? That could be. Yeah. I I think he's wearing a mermaid shirt. Look, look, right. like, no, it's no, a, no, 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 no. He's it's wearing, hang on, hang on, I gotta go back. I didn't even notice. Let me see. I I was I was. Oh, like, it's just blue and silver. Web. No, no, no. Like there's a part where he lifts up his arms, and you can clearly read on the shirt it says Michigan. Maybe that's where he went to school. He went yeah, abroad. Yeah, that's yeah. Guys, One of them foreign wait, exchange students. Abroad <laughs> to Michigan? Where'd he of go? All the places you would go to travel abroad for college. Why would you go to Michigan? I was going to say, man, I hope he had a. Yeah, maybe it's cheaper. All right. Well, I, I bet it was cheaper. I hope he had a gun with him. <laughs> I live there, there. I can see that. And misinformation. Trans people are barely invited onto these public spaces to debate our rights in existence, let alone given the individual platforms that transphobes are so often given. Trans people. I'm sorry. I'm so here, sick of hearing that term, though. Debate our right to exist. Like, stop. 
<laughs> Nobody is telling you to kill yourself. That's what well, that's what it sounds like that. when you say that. Yeah. Certainly. I mean, there's, like, no, 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 no. I mean I, I would say, Ray, that there's definitely like some like legislation that's being passed that's kind of like iffy. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. Iffy iffy maybe, but like I don't know. Like it, it, these people make it sound like where they use terms like that or like uh, wording like that, that like they're arguing that like these people want us to be sent to the death penalty for it. Like that's just like I don't know. I can I can see from the perspective of a trans person with the way that like rhetoric is so heated today around this issue and like every other day it's another fucking story that has to do with trans issues that's causing a big ruckus. Yeah, um, they do, they and, like, do I can see how they feel under attack. Trans, I mean, under attack is one thing, but it's a lot of rhetoric about trans genocide. Like, we're all dying all the time. Yeah, that's a bit extreme. Yeah, that's, and it's that's extreme. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's oh, what... They just want to get rid of us. They want us all dead. Like, I'll see I, people on Twitter say, J.K. Rowling just wants uh, me dead. And it's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah that's, I've I, seen like I, Lilith do that. that. It's th th they think of any disagreement or or branching off from their worldview as some kind of threat of, of an existential nature so that you can't you're forced to agree with them if you don't want to be seen as an existential threat that's a certain subset yeah well th there's definitely thing, those people though. that are really loud in the conversation yeah yeah well that that's my thing though right like it like my in my mind it's like if you want to advance this topic like you you, you need to be precise in your wording you get you need to like make it sound like you know, like, hey, listen to me, like, actually hear me out, rather than just like, you just want to kill me. Like, oh, I'm, I I'm sorry. As, like that's. I was just gonna I, say, I always thought when they, whenever someone says, they, when they're arguing that they don't want us to exist, I'm just imagining Thanos snap. I mean, it's that, yeah, that's what I right. think. Though. That's. That's the imagery it invokes, though. Unironically, when they say like debate our right to exist, it really does just sound like. Like the opposition is arguing for government, like uh, sanctioned, like just murder squads of trans okay, people. Okay, if you it had the Infinity Stones, what group would you Thanos snap? <laughs> oh God! Well, no, uh, hmm. first the Jays, no the Johns. I would probably have to make a visit through Detroit. The for I think there's like Jesus a, Christ, Eddie. A group of people put people that don't put shopping carts back. Starts with a J. You know, enjoys culture and bangs. Jane's wears. Enjoy the filter fish. Joker. Mm -hmm. and, and people wearing, who wear jorts. Wearing tiny hats. You know, those people. What, Jiggalos? Oh, favorite. Oh, yeah, Jiggalos. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> In the Jiggalos. <laughs> the Jiggalos. The, the, uh, Juggalos, the, yeah. the insane cloud posse. Super right. <laughs> <Let's, laughs> I don't, I would not. <laughs> let's roll let's roll all trans people's lives and trans rights are not something that should be up for debate trans people exist and trans people deserve to live our lives as ourselves and access the appropriate health care including in childhood transgender trend yeah, who on, are we hold we are hold up hold up no one is denying that trans people exist like you teddy i mean there are the, like we're gonna get back into it but yeah i mean there are like, well some people no, that are saying sure that. sure okay like, hey, like matt walsh uh, like matt say, walsh though, is saying that and he's super popular can say the, the 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 central question isn't that though that's not the main yeah. area of where the yeah that's, that's, I, okay i that's guess the extreme I guess, side of the argument that they're i was gonna say against. i guess yeah, fair enough let me be i did just argue for precise in my wording let me be more specific here the general public or people in general aren't like trying to be like yeah let's like you know let's get rid of trans people oh no like people in mass walls and whatnot they are dishonest actors and they are probably arguing for this stuff but like that's not like when people who are just like i don't think we should like put uh kids on hormone they're not like being like oh we should just kill all the trans that's not happening right not yeah they're on. They're ascribe. They're taking an extreme position and ascribing it to everybody that they view as, you know, what speaking the, against what they would want. Yeah. I was yeah. gonna say, what's the, what's the phrasing for that? Was that low hanging fruit or was that something else? I don't know. Who cares about phrases? I don't Who care about debate bro terms. Well, it's, <laughs> debate, it's, it's debate tactics. What a one! Come on. I Dan. hate that. All right, let's keep. Uh, let's <laughs> let's hear about trans trender or trans transgender trend. 
<laughs> no, Chans are the different kind I, of people. I, I turned up the volume a little chance. bit on my end. I have no idea if that's going to affect you guys or not. Nope, no, you're fine. All okay. right. An organization of parents, professionals, and academics based in the UK who are concerned about the current trend to diagnose children as transgender, including the unprecedented number of teenage girls suddenly self identifying as trans. They're referencing rapid onset gender dysphoria there, which is something that is unfounded and not supported by any trans inclusive medical. Hold on, hold on. W this this was after that report you talked about, right? No, ROGD. That's a that's a Lipman paper from a uh, while ago. Okay. I want to okay. say like 2018, I'm, right? I'm yeah. I'm and, sorry. And it I, is. Yeah. It, it's not. It's not a definitive work. A lot of people hold ROGD up as though it's like a definitive work and like proof that this thing is happening. Yeah. It's just. It's just a statement. It's just. It's. It's basically just a statement that there are people reporting that this is happening, and we should probably look. at Well, it. yeah. Like I was gonna say, all it's doing is observing a trend, isn't it? Which. Yeah. Say preliminary, yeah. So there's several things going on, right? So one, is there a big increase in girls seeking gender transition into male? And the answer mm -hmm. to that question is unequivocally yes. Like we just, we know the numbers, we know it's a big increase. So that part isn't really a claim set out by the rapid onset gender dysphoria uh, paper. Right. The rapid onset gender dysphoria paper is the one, it was sort of a preliminary look and, and it pulled parents and said, okay, when your daughter started to identify as transgender, what was going on in her social circle? What was going on with her use of the internet? And essentially what they tried to track or the one of the conclusions or one of the things they observed was the social contagion thing where mm -hmm. if a girl had a friend who transitioned, she was more likely to identify as transgender. Or if she went on websites that talked about transgender issues she was more likely to become transgender so that was really the findings now it was all and i think this person will tell us that it was all parent reported so mm -hmm. you never know like their perceptions of what's going on okay. in your child's right yeah okay that's, that's say, fair well, enough my child had no gender issues whatsoever and then one day they came up to me and said they're trans like maybe that's true maybe they never did have gender problems but maybe the parent just didn't notice so. I I will say I will say and uh, I guess this is just me and then I guess it depends. Well, no, these would have been teenagers, right? Yeah. Uh yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, my my experience here might be moot, but I will. I I do remember from the short amount of time that I was working as a after school teacher. Uh, they said that like if like the kids act a certain way or like suddenly they bring something up, uh, and like it seems concerning let someone know because that's that's usually a really bad red flag because um, it, yeah you're talking about being a, a mandated reporter yeah 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 that's it, what that's what all all, all 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 teachers are mandated reporters where if there's anything yes. that we suspect like in terms of like abuse or anything well, going yeah, on yeah, in yeah, that yeah. way that we we are we are legally obligated to report it well yeah and they or when I was the, a teacher we, anyway yeah, we, yeah. One it, of the, I was gonna say I thought I, I'm not a teacher anymore be, not anymore. No, but like the yeah, but like I guess like the I thing I remember. Us. Yeah. <laughs> the the thing I remember about that is that they said like here are some things that you can uh use to note if like you to like identify problems and they just said like if kids bring something up that's because they've been exposed to it in some way and like mm -hmm. especially if like they never talked about it before and then mm -hmm. suddenly they're sure. bringing it up. I mean, it's kind of difficult to not. But yeah, um, but like even part... even in like tan tangentially, like if Discord and all this shit didn't exist, Twitter didn't exist, like I think people would still know. Like I think kids would still realize that there's like trans people about. <laughs> like, no, 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 yeah, yeah. And those people are I, looking weird today. No, <laughs> but okay, I guess uh, yeah. I've seen no, girls I, I, from I, this country flag on Twitter. They're like the <laughs> ugliest women. I, had, no, I went but, to this like drag race or something, and it was it was very bizarre. There's this lady. I I don't. She looked very weird. Yeah, but no, but yeah. no, no. That's why I said like if, at least in my experience, it would be kind of moot for what they're talking about here because these are teenagers. But like I know that like if a young kid brings up the concept of HRT, that's oh. suspect. Yeah, they, yeah, I wouldn't expect a young kid to know about hormone replacement therapy, but that's not what these kids are bringing up. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. what this, what this what different. the diagnosis pertains for childhood 
dysphoria is that there's six different criteria that need to be met that's persistent and, cons- and consistent um, for a period of six months or more. That's that's the criteria for diagnosing childhood gender, gender dysphoria. And it's usually things like uh, persistent insistence that they are, you know, opposite gender, that um, they're playing with op- cross, cross-gender toys. Um, they're wanting to dress as the opposite gender. They're wanting to act like the opposite, you know, things like that. Yeah. And that needs to be consistent and persistence for six months. So it's not necessarily, like, I don't think the kids are bringing up HRT. I don't, yeah. I don't think the kids are doing that. But I think it's important right, to right, note, right. too, that the idea of social contagion gets poo-pooed by uh, YouTubers generally like this. Uh, but social contagion itself is not a controversial thing. No, it's, it exists. It's a thing that definitely yeah, exists. Say. It's just a con- the controversy is whether it applies to something like gender dysphoria. Right, mm. yeah. And it seems... Like the markers are there. I don't think that there's anything that's definitively shown that yes, this is yeah. this can move like a and social contagion. We, and I think one thing I said the last time we looked at this was that probably if it is happening, it's happening online. Yeah. That yeah. It's people encountering it's not gonna be friend groups in real life generally doing this. Though I suppose it's not outside the realm of possibility, but it's going to be online discords or Tumblr pages or whatever where kids see other people get clout and online attention and then they you know conveniently interpret all their feelings as dysphoria Mm -hmm. Uh, feelings Mm -hmm. that are probably easily confused between multiple kinds of distress and hey that's what the that's what having a multi interdisciplinary team to break up those silos kind of does for the experts path has actively denounced ROGD as a thing and a term to be used. ROGD is not evidence-based, it's not scientific. We're also concerned about legislation which places transgender rights above the right to safety for girls and young women in public toilets and changing rooms along with fairness for girls in sport. Typical trans- I, The sports question I think is pretty, I mean, I don't think there's going to be any movement on that towards like a pro trans inclusion women's sports i i just don't see that in the cards i was gonna say that it (laughs) definitely seems to be the case that like if we're going to do like if we're gonna like have uh sports fields with uh both men women and trans women then we're probably gonna have to separate it into a third category because they just definitively have an advantage over uh you know all like i guess if you want to use the PC terminology here, women from birth versus like, you know, men from birth, like uh, the trans women have an advantage over women from birth and a disadvantage against uh, men from birth, because that's just what hormones do to you. Yeah. And um, I mean, it's not all sports, obviously, you know, I think that that's an important caveat to bring up, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely sports where the, um, you know, the type of puberty that the person went through doesn't matter. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. how those, much uh, those your tend hormones to be matter like in open golf. Anyway, yeah, I was gonna say yeah, those, those are open. Those, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say oh, those open, aren't uh, separated out, anyways. But like bodybuilding, for example. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Come on, NFL. Like, it, like I'm thinking like high tier professional sports, high tier college sports, like that are look, like physical, like swimming. Like obviously, Leah Thomas is the. Yeah, I was know, gonna say that's, look, that's the I, one that's on that everybody thinks about when they think of trans women in sports and. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that that was a, a victory for no, trans I think inclusion in sports. Really, it looked really bad. Yeah, it looked for really bad. And, everybody. Yeah. You guys and, it, think and it made Leah the Thomas arguments will. just look really absurd. So, yeah. yeah. You guys, uh, did you guys think that Leah Thomas will ever get her face on the Wheaties box like Caitlyn Jenner? <laughs> <laughs> don't make, you know what? I don't want to like um, presume what Leah Thomas's motivations were because I, I don't know if they're genuine or not, you know? And I, I and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, and that they have genuine feelings of you know I am a woman and I do want to compete. Still, yeah. you know that you have that drive. Oh, but. is there some question about whether she just did it just to? Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of yeah, you know sure. people read people read things into things that don't exist all the time, and they they cast aspersions and motivations that you can't prove onto people. Hell, I'm very, guilty it's of very it. Very easy to hypothesize like that. Yeah. It's very easy to hypothesize that someone transitioned just so they could get like first place. In a competition or whatever. Well, but yeah, it's just like it's when not a very Cartman, easy thing to prove. You can't, just, no. you can't Cartman, really uh, uh, participate in the Special Olympics because quote they were retards. <laughs> no, there, yeah. there were some things like 
the the fact that uh, Leah insisted on cha- being in the changing room. Yeah, some swimmers made, came out. Some swimmers and, were yeah. like, "Yeah, super uncomfortable." The- yeah, and that's that's the other half of this that the because he talked about trans women in sports, and the other half was like bathroom, which changing rooms. I think roll into that. Yeah. Conversation yeah. and that one's and that's a whole. Uh, it's that one is a lot more complicated. There's been a few court cases over it at state supreme court levels. The Supreme Court itself hasn't looked at a case on that yet. And there's been a few laws that have been passed uh, that ban transgender bathroom access and laws that uh, explicit e- explicitly require it. Yeah, in several different states. So. Nothing's come across the Supreme Court yet. Like I said, there's been a few school cases that went to state courts, and those all found in favor of the trans student mm-hmm. that they were due access to the bathroom that matched their gender identity. Which, on honestly, I mean, that was that was like middle schoolers and high schoolers. So I don't know. Who knows? We are not now, even two minutes into this. I know. Just pointing that out. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. That's just... All right. Well, let's 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 make it on point from here on out. Okay. Transphobia about trans rights hinder women's rights. They don't. You are pitting trans rights and women's rights against each other when actually if you just looked at the facts, they do not impede on each other and trans women need God damn it, man. I just said we're not even two minutes into this, but I can't just let that slide. You gotta let it slide. <laughs> I think everybody can understand how silly that, uh, that statement is. Yeah. It's like, yeah, right, there fine. is a conflict. There's a con- conflict of definition. There's a conflict of rights. There's a conflict of comfort. Yep, all those things. Sorry. Just power through this. Women's rights and trans people are the last people who want to take rights away from anybody. We believe that children with gender dysphoria deserve evidence-based treatment and have a right to the same duty of care as any other child. Okay, before we watch a little clip of the interview, we can have a very small chat about the evidence-based oh health care available oh for trans children the and the science that backs it up. Oh no. It's been found that early social transition for trans youth leads to positive mental health outcomes. A study into over 300 transgender youth with a mean age of eight years old, found that after five years, 97.5% were still identifying as either binary transgender or non-binary. So that's the one that I was talking about where I think the youngest, like 30% of those kids were like five when they started oh. the study. And oh a lot, God. and like, I think everybody in the study had some sort of um, active treatment measure being done, whether it was social transitioning or I think like by the end of the study, 60% of the kids were on either puberty blockers or um, already on hormone replacement therapy. Jeez. And like, yeah, something like 98% persisted. It's not a good uh, thing. No, that's, that doesn't prove your point. That's, I mean, and I mean, like I said, I mean, this idiot did this study for uh, indoctrination purposes. But... <laughs> I mean, it's, and it's, and like I was saying earlier, it's like these fucking idiots didn't even read the cast report. Like, like I said, this video is from August that came out back in March. Like you're, you're, you're talking about the most up-to-date science on care. You didn't even read the fucking report. But you know what they that, did that, do? Like, that like conglomerated that and was like, they, hey, guess what? Like all the science kind of contradicts. You know what they did do? They read a study by Jack Turbin. Right. Who we know yeah. is definitely not a hack rod. <laughs> is that, is that the, is, is Turbin the suicide study? I think so. He did a lot of trash studies. I saw Ethan Klein tweet something out today about oh, like no. how, how 80% of trans people think about suicide and 40% have attempted. And I'm like, it's not even... <laughs> It's not even what that study fucking said. <laughs> it has also been stated that transphobes ignore decades of research that support the access to healthcare of both transgender adults and children. Medical associations support the treatment of transgender people, both social and medical. False. Doesn't Wait, doesn't support Uh-oh. social transition. That's what Stensma was warning about in his studies that you guys quote. Wait, wait, wait hold on. Wait. I- just so I have the full context here, like I, yes. I, I'm somewhat zoning out a little bit here. But uh, what what was false exactly? Um, that that he was. Hang on, let's go back and hear the line again. Uh, of transgender people, both social and medical. In trans youth, age thirteen, it was that the medical associations support the treatment of transgender people, both social and medical. So Not in trans youth, though. Not in trans youth, though. It doesn't yeah. support that. 
It supports it for if you, I mean, for best outcome for a kid who genuinely has gender dysphoria. But like I said, persistence is seven to twenty-one percent for kids diagnosed with gender dysphoria. Could go. It could be up to fifty. Those are usually studies. That's usually the born female number, and usually those like in those studies, it's like less than ten that they have for data size because it was so rare before this current age when there's a forty-five hundred. A percent increase. ...to 20 years old, access to gender-affirming health care led to a 60% drop in the chances of severe to moderate depression. And when I tell you that was me just going over a fraction of the actual evidence-based health care and science around <laughs> trans people and trans... Science. Science! Okay, okay, so I feel like this is actually a good point, time is to jump in with this. Yes, you have, you have cherry-picked all of the positive benefits to transitioning just in the same exact way that the center for Gatorade benefits has also specifically done only experiments or has run experiments and only cherry pick the results that prove that Gatorade is good for you. That's so cynical. I'm not terribly moved by studies that say Gender affirmative care leads to overall better health, uh, like mental health outcomes, because I feel like that's only part of the question that's really relevant. Because well, I think if you are a teenager and you are upset, or you're a young person, you're upset about your body and your gender, and then you are given what you want, like you go and you say, I want this, and they're like, okay, here, have this. I'm, am I shocked that very few people are upset when that happens? <laughs> like, th that their mental health improves? Like, you asked for something and you got it. Like, cool. Great. You're going to feel pretty good. You, you got attention. You got something that you wanted. You're experiencing changes that you wanted. Like, okay, that's pretty predictable. I, I don't think most people go in saying, I want, you know, boobs. And then they walk out with boobs and like, what the heck are these? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think they know. Yeah, no, but like, okay. Like, of course, my your mental health is going to be better, but th there's so much more to the question. There's your physiological health, there's diabetes, there's neurological health, uh, the I'm, increased rate of dementia, like all those things are really. Well, yeah, important. especially, that's, especially that's from, from childhood, especially yeah. from childhood. Yeah, or uh, yeah, sexual but, satisfaction. Like, how many of these kids are going to ever have an orgasm? Yeah, well, that, they, that, they don't. That's, hold on, especially that, the ones that's that have puberty I'm, blockers. Yeah, that's what I'm right. getting at, though. That's that's what I'm getting at with this guy, right? That's why I make the comparison to uh, the K rated research. It's fine if you want to point out all the benefits, right? But don't don't show me only the good. Yeah. Like you have to show me all of it. You can't just sit here and specifically prime everybody for the next section that you're going to go into your video. That's just like here is all of the good it does. That's great. I am. I'm even certain that he's correct about so, like some of this stuff, or even a a good chunk of it. Right? Mm -hmm. I didn't know any of it was false until Danimal pointed out. And to be honest, it's fine if uh if if it was the case that all of it was true, that would have been fine. But my issue is that he didn't even bring up. Oh, by the way, because we can't just like you know sit here and pretend like this is only ever good, which is exactly what he's doing. Here's all the bad, like, here's all the, like, you know, side effects or problems that can occur from, like, that's the thing none of these people want to do. They don't want to, like, they don't want to, like, engage with the idea that, like, reality is a thing and that, you know, there might be long-term consequences to the actions that you take when engaging with this stuff. It may be overall a good thing for you. I'm not saying that, like, like transitioning or like you know trans surgery or or even doing hormone uh replacement therapy is inherently a bad thing it might be the correct decision for these for uh whoever wants to go on it or even is uh diagnosed and then recommended to take the treatment but don't don't show me only the good and hide all of the bad don't do that like that's not valuable that just makes it seem more suspect yeah it absolutely right. does. And, and, and yeah, here, here. And people totally like pick up on that too. That like they, they, they know when you're withholding something from them. Well, like I said, that's why uh, the, the, the research center, center for the uh, scientific benefits of Gatorade. That's all they do. They run studies day after day after day. 
Well, I, it's well, it's more so it's more so that they're misframing the studies because these studies yeah. are all showing that like people with gender dysphoria who receive this treatment have a positive outcome. We all know that. I, I know that some people dispute that. We were talking about more extreme people, and they're like, "Well, I mean, not really. They're just tricking themselves, and they, you know, they'll be mean about it and stuff like that." But overall, I mean, I think pretty much there's a consensus a, a, a consensus that this treatment will positively uh, impact gender dysphoria and assuage it. Now, the question is. The problem is that gender dysphoria, when diagnosed in childhood, doesn't typically persist in the adolescence. If it does persist in the adolescence and pass, then transition. That's the best path, it seems. Um, but th th that's that's the sticking point, is in childhood, because it seems that it doesn't last past childhood for a lot. Right. And that's really the argument. It yeah, never yeah. gets really Definitely. like put in those terms children having access to the appropriate health care, I mean it, that was a fraction. If they're talking about wanting evidence-based health care, there it is, but your transphobia is stopping you from seeing it. Anyway, now that we've cleared that up a little bit, it's time to go through the actual video clip of what this person said on the news. Pause. Yay. It challenges the idea that we're uh, oh, oh. children. Oh my god. <laughs> Who was saying pause it? No, no, no. I'm, I said it's not worth it. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, let's go back a few <laughs> it seconds. It really wasn't. <laughs> I'm oh, so no. sorry. I'm so sorry. It really wasn't worth it. Okay, let's keep going. We've cleared that up a little bit. It's time to go through the actual video clip of what this person said on the news. Yay. It challenges the idea that we're uh, children are being medically transitioned. Um, I'm going to stop it already because children being medically transitioned is such a thrown about phrase. When this kind of phrase is said, the automatic assumption from people hearing that who do not know anything beyond what they've just been told will assume that children are being given hormones and having surgery in relation to being trans. That's I, just I'm not loose. true. If people are actually aware of the- It does happen. I- yeah. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Yes. Just- I know, I know it does, but like, I just wanna- I wanna be clear. Like, he said, when people refer to medical trans- What- what, what do you- what is this- what does this guy think medical transition is? Well, he, uh, he said that when, you know, people think about it, they think about the hormones, hormones and the and surgeries, surgery. which he says that kids are not getting. But I mean, yeah, like true, I but... like I've seen the I've seen surgeons brag about patients as young as thirteen getting mastectomy. I was I was gonna say like well, that's what I'm asking. What does he think happens then? Like I mean, I'm... is is a mastectomy not a gender transition surgery? Well, it's not a big I... one. You see, they they'll say that. <sighs> They'll say oh that. my no. god! Like Jack Turban, I think went on Twitter was like, "Well, you can always replace the breasts." Look, Jack look, Turban I'm... did. Yes. You oh, can't yeah, replace you can the just, breast. When you remove the breast, there's tons yeah, of microorgans. You, you just put you just put silicone in there. It's fine. Yeah. Oh my god. You get new boobs. Great. Right. Even better than does he not know what a breast is? I'm gay and I know what a breast is. You can't you can't just reconstruct a breast. When you remove the breast, the breast is gone. And it's such a they talk about re, suppose the reversible procedures in such a flippant, nonchalant way. Yeah. It's a surgery of really a surgery of any kind outside of maybe stitches is a fairly serious affair well like, yeah you that's... have to have i don't know like a tumor taken off an organ or something you know that's a, a very serious thing that you have to actually prepare for that you can't turn back from yeah but... okay well and I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna jump in there since you brought up this uh, i will say these people are not all not the only people guilty of that right like people people in general really downplay how serious surgery is mm -hmm. yeah yeah although Any, surgery yeah. surgery kind of, is a lot safer than it used no to no be. no yes that, that's, like, that's a, i'm not saying when i say it's serious i don't mean like oh like there's you know it like it's really no i mean like anytime you do surgery there's going to be after effect consequences it's right, not necessarily yeah. how safe it is it's like you're there is going to be long-term effects from doing any surgery and what's really funny is the kind of surgery that continues to be probably the most dangerous are things like cosmetic surgery right yeah, yeah. cosmetic like, surgeries cosmetic seem, cosmetic i mean have you seen madonna is, yeah like people go to mexico and then die from like all kinds of procedures it's very it's a very sketchy field uh but we don't really talk about that well that and then I was gonna trans, say just like a lot two, of trans procedures are more or less these cosmetic I was gonna say procedures. just like two two anecdotal evidence I have just in my uh 
my life is that my friend, you know, he got he got a vasectomy, regretted it, that wanted, and he found out it was reversible because there's a different surgery that reattaches it, but it's like limited time, and also, mm. uh, insurance will not cover that. Oh, period. Yeah. That's the other oh, thing, because yeah. some of these girls who detransition and try to get breast reconstruction surgery, they get turned down. Yeah, because they get told, and, and then, no, your surgery was elective, so you can't. Well, and, uh, I, when I was when I was in seventh grade, I broke my arm and it was a clean break and i remember the doctors they were i think my mom was just like well you could, are you gonna put them under you can put them in surgery and the doctors are just very clear they're like we do not want to put this uh seventh grade so 13 year yeah we do not want to put this 13 year old under for surgery we really do not want to do that we know he broke an arm but we're gonna do everything to avoid that outcome so the, and they did. Instead, I got pumped full of a lot of anesthetics, and I can still vividly, vividly remember the feeling of how my arm was contorted back into place. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm just glad it was not more of a serious break. It was a clean break, so yay. The terrible state that trans healthcare is in in the UK at the moment, they'd realise that trans kids are actually very unlikely to have an appointment anytime soon anyway, let alone receive any kind of gender affirming care. Which by the way would be reversible puberty blockers that would be very stringently monitored, with 16 then being God, the minimum age up. for hormones. Yeah, we know Kira they're Bell. not. That's what Kirabel sued over in one. So I was gonna say we know they're not. We a we know they're not reversible, and b we know they're not stringently monitored. Shut they, up. They're they're but, not really monitored very much at all. Well, yeah, and and here's the thing: is that it's another thing that was being sold as this is a pause button that you can place on puberty for the child to decide, and it's been shown that putting that giving a kid puberty blockers as a pause button is basically going to guarantee that they persist in their gender dysphoria because they're not going through natural puberty. Yep, they're not going through the necessary changes from child to adolescent to adult. And if if a kid's going to desist from gender dysphoria, it seems that puberty is when they do it. And if you're yep. blocking that from them and they would have naturally desisted, it seems that they're not. And like I said, I mean... What is it in Tanner 2? If they get on puberty blockers, there's basically no sexual function. After that. Yeah, the, there's a chance that they'll never experience an orgasm in adulthood. Like, are you f you're serious? You're robbing like a, an individual of that. Like, and I mean, I think it's that's, just bad uh, news. What's what's their face? Uh, Jazz Jennings. Yeah, Man, that's, that's a sad story. In, in lurid detail about her sexual problems. Well, and they think Jazz yeah. Jazz Jennings get a vaginoplasty at yeah. eighteen. Yeah. yeah, and before. She never experienced an orgasm, yeah. so that was it. And she's—I don't think she's ever had sexual function. No. Uh, and that's and that's God. Yeah, puberty blockers need to be studied, big time. And it being very rare for people to actually get hormones at sixteen and parental consent needing to be required. Children with accepting parents and families and guardians are able to make social transitioning steps to live in a way that makes them feel more comfortable and get on the wait list to speak to a gender specialist. Then after years of being on this wait list and multiple appointments and assessments later, then maybe they might access puberty blockers. Just gonna throw it in there again that early social transition has been shown to lead to improved mental. That turban study again. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> Increased mental health, you guys, based on probably some kind of survey. Yeah. Boom. A self reported Science. survey. Science. Health. <sighs> By the way, I just want to point out that self reported surveys is why um, uh, I think it's Richard Spitzer or Rick Spitzer. Uh, anyway, it was the Spitzer, a guy, Spitzer. I, yeah, a, a guy that did a conversion therapy study and he retracted it. It was it was a study that showed that conversion therapy of homosexuality works, and he oh, retracted it because, <laughs> and he retracted it because his methodology was just self-reported surveys, and there was no way to measure anything. And a lot of these people just said that, and then went on to continue engaging in same-sex relationships. So <laughs> they just <laughs> so he retracted the study because it was all self self-reported. You can't really rely on that. But conversion camps work, Daniel. You missed the most important part. <laughs> he ended up retracting the study. You yeah. gotta believe oh. in it. <laughs> right. God. Oh my god. Uh, it's one of the Mike Pence memes. 
Oh, I like those. <laughs> I <miss> those. <laughs> As they are good and terrible as they are. You know, that's why Trump should be president, so we can still have yeah. oh. memes. Oh god! Uh, yeah. <laughs> look, Those are look, my favorite. I, look, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm probably saying something damning here. Maybe not really, but like, I voted for him twice. I don't want him to uh, run again. Yeah, <laughs> no more. Yeah, I hear you. Do you promise? In fact, I don't. I promise challenge the, the idea of transgender people uh, what i do challenge is the ideology behind it it's um so she doesn't dispute that trans people exist but she's challenging the ideology behind the existence of trans people no yeah, you mean not, like you that's not, it's not what she said she didn't say the ideology behind the existence of trans people she said like the ideology behind that it's apparent it's self-apparent like it's like these people act like it doesn't exist Sometimes. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. Yeah, because they, they can complete their understanding with all trans people and by extension, all LGBT people as well in general. Yeah. Well, hold on, I think hold they on. don't recognize their own belief system for what it is a belief system. Hold yeah. on, hold on. They just let, think let me, it's reality. I, I'm a little out of, yeah. a little bit out of the loop here. Uh, it, it, was she talking about like the specifically like the people who are uh, gun ho for being like, you know, the activist crowd basically? Is that what she's referring to? Well, I don't know. He only plays a little bit of her clip in this. So I'm not sure where exactly she was going with it. But she I just was... talked about the the ideology behind it. What I what I take that to mean is the born in the wrong body narrative, you know, the, the gender well, yeah, spectrum, that... you know, all that kind of stuff. I was going to yeah. say, usually, like, if I hear the term ideology used in that way, I'm going to assume it's like talking about the activist crowd, you know? Yeah, like this guy right here, and look when he's like sitting here, I'd be like, the ideal. No, that's playing dumb. He knows what she's talking about. We know what she's talking about. Gender is maybe. an infinite spectrum, and <laughs> yeah, it's we, all have our own an aesthetic. we all have our but own that... gender, and it's a secret to only us. And your gender or... identity is fixed forever, and you can't change it. You know what's and... funny, yeah. can Kenneth Zucker pointed this out. Kenneth Zucker is one of those gender experts. I think he had his clinic closed in Canada. He's that guy. But uh, but he he pointed out something that was kind of funny, where these people are constructionists for everything else, social constructionists for everything else. But when it comes to gender, they're essentialists. Yeah. And <laughs> and he said that the that the that the right wing side of it are essentialists for everything, but when it comes to gender, they're constructionists. <laughs> you can change it. So you just notice that little cross yep. crossroad there. Which I, I mean, was, uh, I'll, uh, I'll give it to that guy. I guess he's technically correct since I did uh, claim to be a gender abolitionist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Scroll. Huh? What does that even mean? Some people are trans. The ideology behind that is that trans people exist, deserve equal rights, and deserve access to appropriate gender affirm. Oh, shut the fuck up! You know what you did here. Don't don't bullshit us. That's what that's what that's what I want to a point. I don't think that's like what it. that's what we're talking about here, though. It seems less like an ideology and more like a system of demands. Well, I mean, it's it's let's let's hear the demands again, real quick. Hang on. Yeah, let's let's hear this again. Let's hear what gender ideology is. That trans people exist, deserve equal rights, and deserve access to appropriate gender affirming health care. I mean, I believe in all that. I think that trans people exist. I think no, that yeah, they yeah, also yeah, yeah. deserve right, you know, equal yeah. protection under the law, and that they need access to good health care. The problem is the fight is over what are equal rights. Like what? What? What are we talking about here? And how is that impinging on other people's rights? Yeah. You know, that's always well, yeah, a dance say, that needs to be is... done. And then, and then with the medical, what's 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 the most ethical metal pa uh, med yeah, medical path? Medical path and the most accurate one. What is? Yeah, what is the appropriate care? one? Look, look, this is actually a time where I could bring up a debate term here. Like this is Ooh. this is very easily Martin Bailey here. Like he's like she's like brought up. Oh, like I worry about the ideology. Me, like like I said, like we were saying earlier. The activist crowd, he's clearly aware of this. And so what he's doing now, he's like, what is she talking about? Is she talking about any, ref uh, you know, he's retracting back to the, uh, the Mott was the more defendable, but less. Uh, mm -hmm. The moral so Mott and the bullshit Bailey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know how informed this person is on the issue. I, I look, I'm going to be real Because they, they maybe... seem to be just repeating. Like, I think, yeah, this person's. 
kind of just saying mantras that they've learned. Whenever I watch trans YouTubers, they all talk like this and they all use the same language and they say the same phrases to almost any uh But okay, prompts. they see that's they just, that's my thing it's though. The same about wording this, right? and it's really weird. Yeah. Well, that's and like that's, they don't want us to exist. No, 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 but that, that that's the thing I'm getting at though, Kev. It's like like the way that these guys talk, the way that like, you know, they're all in lockstep like this. I from like, you know, now this Jesus Christ, I hate that I actually get a chance to bring this up because it's Ooh. not relevant. Is but, it Christian? Uh, no. Uh it's worse than that. We we get to we get to bring up the old boogeyman here. Uh, like, uh. you know, when I was in Gamergate. Oh. This, this, oh. <laughs> I heard that Gamergate attacked Paul Pelosi. I, I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? But this is this is the thing that, like, you know, a lot of people were they were like curious about, like the whole, like the how the journalists were acting. It was it was that kind of lockstep. They all had the exact same story, mm -hmm. like the, how many of the gamers are dead articles, and but behind closed doors and whatnot, like the leaks and whatnot that were coming out, it's just like yeah, these these were all uh, like you know they're all adults. They all think with their own brain cells and stuff. They know what they're doing, sort of stuff, and they know that they're appealing to an audience or attempting to appeal to an audience i i'm sorry but like all of these youtubers use that same playbook so to, to a degree i'm skeptical of their innocence mm, on it I because you. they would be the people who would be uh actually indoctrinating the people who are more or less unengaged i like to assume stupidity where malintent cannot be uh, i mean yeah don't don't yeah. attribute don't don't attribute malice to what could be easily ex uh, explained by stupidity. I agree, but yeah. skeptical. Let's put it that way. The children are being taught that they're a boy or a girl based on really regressive stereotypes rather than their biological sex. I think it's doing the, the uh, theory of gender identity is doing great harm to children. So she explained what her idea of gender theory was and it's yeah basing gender on really regressive stereotypes remember we saw this in the non-binary video where she was yep. talking about how because she didn't want to wear a dress that she wasn't a girl mm -hmm. yeah and it's, it's like, like to do oh my God. things and i like to do girl things that means i'm non-binary it's like yeah oh, oh my and God. Then, yeah. i think is the non-binary crowd is the most perfect personification of like gender theory and like I, what it, people talk about oh when my they talk God, about this, this is gender person? theory i was i i, I know i'm really hard interrupting you, but like I've just wanted to point out I there's this uh, lady on TV have the same opinion of this gender stuff as I do, which is that I think this stuff is stupid because a lot of people when they say oh my gender identity or my gender role, they really just mean their personality or like what they like their personality mm -hmm. traits. It's like mm -hmm. those can those can literally be whatever you want them to be. That's yeah, true. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say like these like the not the non-binary people especially, but gender theory in general is extremely superficial in how it understands uh, what it is to be a man or a woman or or neither. Where it it's based entirely off of what you wear and the things that you like to do that are held to a very arbitrary idea of oh that's a, a boy thing to do or that's a girl thing to do. Like it, it's if you were to say well this little boy likes to bake cookies. And this little girl likes to grill steaks. I guess they're both, you know, non-binary. You know. Well, that that was the thing that was going on with like the whole like. I mean, it's a fake internet and like debacle. But like, this was the whole thing with the tomboy shit. Yeah, it's it's just like our, our little <laughs> girls tomboy extinction. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's what gotta represent but, our tomboy. But sisters. that's the thing, though. Like there. Like, you know, our our little girls nowadays who wear fucking baggy boot-cut jeans and flannels and play f baseball, football, basketball, whatever, or, like, you know, you know, like, if, if they get into their 20s and stuff, or they just, act, like, they pop open a cold one with the boys and have a brewski, are these, like, are these no longer females? Are these now males? Are these trans men? Because they seem fine with being, uh, you know identifying as female being a woman and you know more importantly they seem pretty fine with uh you know engaging in uh relationships and sexual intercourse with men yeah uh, you know what they are they're eggs that's uh, yeah. right they're eggs you gotta crack them mm -hmm. you know uh, you, Ga Gavels is like gotta make it you know what i i <laughs> 
Cav, uh, I'm disappointed in you. You know, like you haven't you haven't cracked Gavel's egg yet. Come you on, know, now. look. <laughs> We've been you, trying. You have not been present for the uh, you know hypnosis <laughs> sessions. The sophistication. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, let me tell you, we have poured hours into it, and I have not seen a lot of growth. <laughs> well, isn't that the point seen. of it, though? Uh, yeah, there hasn't been much shrinkage either. Oh, oh, shame. Okay, let's keep rolling. That's gross. <laughs> you knew what you I were swear. Doing. Trans folks have this image in their head where any slightly non conforming child is suddenly shipped off to the trans factory. Not happening. And actually, when trans people did adhere to these stereotypes in childhood, trans folks say they can't possibly be trans because they adhere to the stereotypes. And then when they haven't adhered to those stereotypes, transphobes say, ah, they must have been forced to transition because they did not adhere to stereotypes. In she didn't say oh, any of that in the video. Who's saying this? <laughs> this, this, uh, okay. this person that he that lives in his head. Well, okay, this is, this is another thing, right, too, right, though? Because technically he is addressing, like, the thing I just talked about. But no, he's, he's, like he's, horribly, he's addressing like Matt Walsh. Yeah, it, like oh. he's horribly misrepresenting the argument, though, too, though. Yeah. Like, go fuck yourself, dude. Well, he's describing like a position that doesn't, that this person doesn't hold. Yeah, like in this he video is, and making it seem like her very reasonable, like discussion of just like, hey, we probably shouldn't be like defining gender along these like stereotypes. Like that seems it, like, yeah, that's, that's, say, that's, that's inaccurate that's, and yeah, ineffective. And I think the, the language she uses is we're teaching children this. Yeah. Right? We're telling kids if you like these kinds of behaviors, you're a boy. And if you like these behaviors, you're a girl. And she's saying those yeah, are she very transgressive things to be teaching a child, mm -hmm. especially a child that is not old enough to understand things like permanence of their body or. Um, complicated things about gender roles. Like, they're too young to really grasp all that. So you're feeding them with oversimplifications that cause a lot of confusion. You know what? Uh, may maybe, like, you know, of what's the term? Devil's advocate, uh, greatest amount of uh, whatever. To be fair to this guy, maybe, like, like the animal said, maybe he is talking about the Matt Walsh and, you know, the Sargon types who do like look at this and just like, well, they must have been like, you know, coerced. And, and yeah, if if that is like the person you're referring to, yeah, I disagree with that person. And yeah, those people are shitty, and that's that's the wrong way to look at this stuff. But at the same time, right, like I I do like these articles and these stories do exist. Like there are there are these boys who are just like, oh well, I played with dolls, and then like my teacher saw it, and then she was like, oh well. Do you are you more of a girl than you are a boy? And it's like these things do they did happen, they do exist. Like don't sit here and be like, oh, that never happened. Fuck off. Yeah, it's not happening in the way that you're describing it. I agree, but don't pretend like it never happens. That there are that there isn't this social co coercion uh, aspect to this stuff. Yeah, and I think the That's like all. I said, the big concern is like education. Are adults telling them this? No. I mean, and there yeah. has been examples of that kind of coercion happening. Like, wasn't there that Texas father case? That one's a little yeah, complicated, complicated, though. In reality, there is a huge amount of diversity within the trans community, just as there is a huge amount of diversity among cis people in terms of gender expression, and people's gender identity and gender expression do not always match up. Granted, nonconformity to assigned birth... I might just be real mean. In my... Mm. In my, uh... 28 years on this planet of one of the the most disheartening things i have learned is that people are not actually as diverse as these activists make it out to be a, a lot of people unironically fall into a lot of very typical behavior patterns yeah true I, i'm sorry like it's just it's kind of just a I disheartening shitty facts of life that millennials yeah, have to deal I, with i don't know of too many trans women who don't pretty much follow the stereotypes i mean that long is hair, a lot. long nails yeah, was, uh jewelry girly clothing pink yeah hair. the typical like yeah. just very typical and i understand partly the reason for it because they want to be recognized so the easiest way to be recognized is just to be kind of over the top or very stereotypical but they almost all the time when they talk about their childhood it's the same thing 
they'll say I was more interested in dolls or I was more interested in this or that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so where it the starts. The justification I mean, always se seems to come back to it. Uh, sex is something that gender clinics will discuss, but it is one of many different criteria and symptoms, and on its own, it really doesn't mean that much, and certainly would not lead to somebody being forced into transitioning. And it leads, um... It, did he just say puberty blockers won't force somebody into transition? All right, hold on, we gotta rewind, because <laughs> I missed that too. So and the claim is, you have to meet all those criteria, not just that you live out these stereotypes. I think the counter would be, it is not hard to imagine a scenario where a child who is engaging in non-conforming gendered behavior will be told, oh, this means you're the other gender. And then as they live out that possibility, they start to change their view of themselves and start mm -hmm. to develop dysphoria because they're like, oh, I really am not like the other boys or the other girls. Maybe I am not the other sex. I don't think it's a terribly complicated path to go down that route because all you're trying to second. get is Hold distress second, right because I, I i brought it up on my own screen just for the, so i could check this uh is this thing that he cropped on image and said that like oh it must fall into is that like from a, a medical book or from like more specifically the dsm-5 because oh. if if it is from like a mental disorders book i got news for that guy uh you do not have to fall into all of those categories you have to fall into enough of those categories that a met like a medical professional would be like this person should be on these yeah experience them to a severe enough degree that it's considered a disorder yeah like those those aren't like oh you have to hit all the bullet points no it's like those are the bullet points you should look out for and then you need to judge the severity of each of these bullet points and how right and I think yeah that and that's a key is that was smart was about puberty blockers and how to qualify for them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well that's so that i was gonna say even DSM, though those traits are the ones for the Diagnosis of gender dysphoria. So I, uh, well, I was gonna say though, like, if it is from a reputable source, it might be from W Path. Just yeah, saying. probably W Path. I was gonna say because, like, even in the DSM five, like, in order to get like prescribed uh, antidepressants, like, there's like there's like five uh, like like bullet points or whatever you want to call it criteria, but like it even says what like a person can meet one of these criteria and still qualify. It just depends on the uh, the severity of the depression. Gee, I wish I know where that came from. They were so good at putting up citations earlier. Could have put up a citation for that. I, so, I know, I know. They could have. The I, in, uh, Jamie Dodger. I, I did check. They did not put any citation whatsoever. This is just <laughs> it's okay. out. That's okay. We'll we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh. And it leads um, once a child identifies themselves as transgender, then the medical pathway um, is experimental. It, it's, it's essentially chemical castration of children. Oh, uh, well, That's you know spicy. what? Let's, let's hear it. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's hear him out. Let's hear him out. You, you can't just go on national television. Trans healthcare has existed for decades. The use of hormone decades. blockers has existed for decades and not just for trans kids. Trans people, adults and children alike, deserve. Okay, yeah, that's as far as I'm going to let that go. Lies. Lies. Yeah, like when, when they say hormone blocking has been around for decades, they don't mean for like gender divergent care. Yeah. They mean like, like it's been around for like treating like precocious puberty. It? Like oh. yeah, like real like medical conditions where it's like really like we need to take this severe step like this will this may affect your child later in life but going through puberty at the age of seven will affect them more harsher than doing this. Uh, when I googled how when were hormones blockers invented, it said like in decades ago. Yeah, well, in yeah, like the eighties, right? Wikipedia. Yeah, but, but that's the thing, though. <laughs> where I do it, all my research. <laughs> was it was it you, Dan, or was it somebody else who pointed out that's like uh, originally they were attempted to be used as like cancer treatments? Well, that's Still Lupron. Like, oh, that was yeah. Lupron. Yeah, yeah. for it's late stage prostate, prostate oh, cancer. Um, estrogen, I'm sorry, that's not that's that's not HRT. I, estrogen I drives breast cancer, so if you can suppress estrogen, it can. Um, oh wait, so wait. It can also be used for men in prostate cancer, I believe. Yeah, because oh, testosterone oh. is a low-level carcinogen. Yeah, 
So it is useful, and it's also used with endometriosis. Mm -hmm. Actually, our our friend Aiden Paladin went through Lupron to treat endometriosis. Yeah, and reported severe side effects. By the way, like brittle bones. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah, and that happened with a lot of girls that were treated for with Lupron for precocious puberty back in the early nineties. Your bones become the bones of an eighty year old woman. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, but that's a that's the thing though. Like when he says like, oh, trans treatments have been around for decades. True. When you say, oh, hormone blockers have been around for decades. Well, true with an asterisk, not in the way that you're describing them to exist. Yeah, or we're being used. Yeah. To this date, it's still an off-label use. For most mm -hmm. of yeah, yeah, it still say. is. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, also, still I also noticed, quote unquote, experimental. I also noticed that uh, he seemed to like because he, he's showing his reactions to when he's watching this. I noticed that he seemed to take umbrage when she said the phrase uh, "chemical cr castration." But yeah, that I'm is a bit sorry. of an aggressive term, I'll say. I'll give, oh yeah, I'll give him that. Like, that's a bit of an aggressive term. But if they fully transition, dude, like, what else are you going to call it? Do you think that's a reference, it's though, to the fact that these blockers are used to chemically castrate sex offenders? Yeah, I think that's that's usually where I see it paired with, is that it's meant to draw that connotation. So yeah, it is it is kind of needlessly aggressive common yeah. language. I will, uh, I will give him that. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, I'll admit I the didn't more actually. Gentle know way much would about be like, that. well, this is these are experimental. They um, can cause lots of long term. I would say effects. infertility. They can the affect. It, they it. can affect yeah, fertility yeah. sometimes transiently, sometimes permanently. They affect sexual function. Sure. All these uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll agree. Like she's coming. Maybe she's using the wrong terminology. Yeah, but she's, here. I'm you just, know, I'm she's just, an activist, right? She's part of. An yeah, activist she is an activist, and yeah. that's uh, the kind yeah. of language they're going to use. And I think British I, I will, puts uh, activists on a lot. I will. Uh, I'll say though that I think uh, the re the original reason I even came to that conclusion was just uh because what you were talking about earlier, where you said there's these cases where like after they go through all this stuff and then they can't orgasm anymore. Maybe you know, maybe that's not chemical castration, but like, that's a that's a fairly severe consequence there. Yeah, I mean that's that's really, I mean that's really a heavy decision <laughs> that needs also, to be taken up a heavy risk. Also, I've been checking this video on YouTube, and apparently the most replayed part is at seven minutes twenty two seconds. Oh, we're so I there. really want. Oh, we're almost. I there. really see. want to see what the hell that is. It'll be like a rally or rah-rah speech. Probably. ...of access to healthcare. And besides, if you think this healthcare is inadequate, since when has the solution been to if you need stop to study the it. healthcare altogether mm -hmm. and not to work on improving it? Besides, puberty blockers have you know. been shown to reduce gender dysphoria. Hold on. Access these blockers. Hold on, hold on. And kids on. are monitored closely to check for any... That, that study he flashed up. I saw that. You flashed that up for almost literally two seconds. And you're talking about using most up-to-date studies. That study was from 2014. That was um, Annalou de Vries, um, who was part of the original Dutch protocols with Thomas Stensma and um, oh, Kalen, Oslo Kalen or something like that. Oh, yeah. I forget. I always forget the third person. But anyway, de Vries is a pretty, but that study didn't say what he said it said. Well, th yeah. Well, that's the thing, though. Is that, like, isn't part of the thing with these studies is that you should... Uh, you should always have them retried or whatever, so you have a more up to date version of it. Yeah, and and Devries is, uh, I mean, she's also somebody who's along lines with Thomas Stenzel, just being like, "Hey, stop using our studies to say all this junk." Like it doesn't say. What you, <laughs> I was going to say. say so, in other words, if the study has not been reproduced recently, that should be a worrying sign. <laughs> Well, not not necessarily, but also just the like I've been saying, like the study is being misrepresented as to what it actually says anyway. Yeah, it's yeah. it's really tempting. You know, you flash a study, the name of a study in the bottom of your video, and then you say a thing, and it seems like you're citing the study, but yeah. often it, you're not actually citing it. You're just saying a thing, and you're kind of lumping your interpretation to this. Well, yeah, I, I, blockers for transgender and gender diverse youth by Mayo Clinic. I noticed you didn't put a date on that one. <laughs> well, that might just be off their that web might page. just be the web, yeah, the website, which is really rigorous. I 
the potential yeah. side effects from taking puberty blockers and treatment is stopped or altered if these occur. And transphobes really do just conveniently ignore the decades of research that support that access to healthcare for trans kids and trans adults. With medical associations supporting the treatment of trans people both in adulthood and childhood, both socially and medically. Or, you know, teenage both? girls are being encouraged to have... For both What's children that? and adults, medically and socially? No. Uh, yeah, again, I think those are some controversial... There's some controversy mixed in there. Yeah, that would be why the NHS just came out with that public consultation on October 20th. Mm. Like, it's uh, not settled. It's not as settled as this guy is making it seem. And people consume these videos and think they're informed. Oh, okay. So hold on a second. So we're, we're two seconds past 22. Uh, apparently, oh, like, the what most replayed clip? clip. Okay. All right, let's, let's see. Let's see have, what this is. Have their breasts cut off if they identify as transgender or non-binary. Wonderful bit of misgendering there, absolutely lovely. Just calling trans boys girls. The language is so grossly insidious. Teenage girls, wrong, are being encouraged, no they're not, to have their breasts cut off. Deliberately provocative description of top surgery. As far as- so that was What is top part. surgery if not the removal of breast tissue? What else would that entail? You can't call it by the thing that it is because that misgenders the, the misgenders the hypothetical people involved. I mean, breast breast chopped use... off is like the most aggressive way to describe it, but also top surgery is the most sugar coated way to describe it's it. Most, so like, it's just yeah. the two ends of the spectrum. Just just call it a mastectomy. You called, That's yeah. what it is. A mastectomy, is. and I think potentially there may be people who don't know that term. True. I, I, I love. But if I you love say, how if you were to just say breast tissue removal, that everyone would know. Oh yeah. And yeah. I just say, want to point oh, out. Are you going to say uh, teenage boys are getting their breasts removed? Like, like that's going to be not... all that much more clear. <laughs> like, oh, teenage boys with gynecomastia? Like, you know, people, you have to say, you kind of have to say yeah. teenage girls so people yeah, get it. Yeah, she's using yeah. these in bio a biological context. So, yeah. you have to. Okay, so yeah, I, I've just double checked. It's literally the most replayed clip is just the part where she says teenage girls are having their breasts cut off. Oh That's wow! The... And not even the commentary afterwards. <laughs> no, like oh, don't boy. Shit about what I don't said. think this video is landing the way you want it's it to. It's all the trans <laughs> men going like, "Yeah, <sighs> that's what I want. I want my breast." <laughs> it takes to actually access healthcare as a trans person. From the five-year wait lists to even see somebody for an appointment, to the multiple hoops you have to jump through, multiple appointments, multiple assessments, there is no encouragement. In fact, you- Bullshit. But the, I mean, the reason that there's so, there's such a long wait list is because of the extreme amount of people that have, that it's increased. I'm is that not you, alarming to you? Yeah. And they, and they it's interesting to system, contrast this they? with uh, American gender clinics, because obviously in the UK, medicine is socialized, and so they have very limited numbers of clinics that actually do this stuff. But in the US, we have a gajillion clinics now, and yeah. the wait times are virtually zero. And in fact, a lot, of the t a lot of the procedures you can just get done at any clinic. You can go to Planned Parenthood, get yourself some hormones. Same can, day. Uh, same day, yeah. Same day appointment. Oh yeah, that's um, actually a good point here. Is it like just very different system? But, yeah, okay. I forgot about that aspect of it. Yeah, because the UK is socialized, and this is a relatively recent phenomenon. I uh, it wouldn't have a ton of clinics for this because the government wouldn't have uh, okayed them just of yet, and they're not going to until they're very sure about this. American but, capitalism like, reigns supreme. <laughs> but that, that's the thing. Tell the people here, what right? they want. Cl claiming that because that safeguard is in place are is an argument that that means that there's no encouragement bullshit absolutely there could be encouragement and we know that there is isn't it ironic that a group where i do see a lot of like communist flags with trans flags on social media a lot mm. that the most the most like the most hard hitting argument they could have against capitalism is how trans healthcare has been commodified but they, but they won't go down that path. Yeah, yeah. They also, could argue I'm not that... sure all the the communist thought leaders of the past would uh, have anything nice to say about them. But true, yeah. yeah. communist regimes, cool homosexuals. So they're, they're communist not... <laughs> regimes and LGBT people are not do not have the 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 warmest relationship because it is the bourgeois vice after all. 
But I don't know. I just I just always found that kind of funny because that's like the strongest critique you could have against capitalism is the commodification of medical services. Yeah, but it makes and it's my, mostly uh, exemplified in transgender healthcare services at the moment. Uh, yeah. I was gonna say, but like, but devil, yeah, that means I would have to point out that I can easily just get my uh, hormone blockers like Tic Tacs, <laughs> and I'm not gonna do that. You're right. There's even the DIY hormone websites where you can just buy it. If you got oh the money, my, if you got the oh scratch. Oh my god. I, I'm gonna be real honest. Uh, a friend of mine tells me about how like you could just go online and you could just order like antibiotics, but like they're like they're meant for like animals. Oh yeah. Meaning that the meaning oh. afterwards, if you're going to take it for yourself, you have to redo the dosages oh, yeah. to be oh, for it. It's a good it's a good uh, light pack by animal livestock uh, antibiotics. Uh, oh my <laughs> god. Instead of going to your doctor mixed up with your oatmeal. Yeah, yeah we no, are not look. we are not medical uh experts giving medical no, advice. No, no, no. Uh, expert. You can no, she's all not. My advice. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> no. No, but like okay, if I get in Fred's case, the only reason he does that is because he doesn't have health insurance. And it's yeah, stupidly that's a bit of a bitch. Yeah, it's like prohibitively expensive. So that's why he's going down like that kind of extreme path. I, you know, fair enough. I guess yeah. do what you gotta do. But but we 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 covered a DIY hormone website on the uh, actually the Kaffels one that Destiny went on about. Yep. On an oh, episode yeah. like a f many months ago. Yeah. Nasty stuff. Nasty nasty stuff. All right, let's keep going. You have Almost to prove done. yourself to be trans enough to access any kind of medical treatment. So sitting there and claiming that kids and young teens are being encouraged to transition is just so inaccurate. So this idea that your body has to match your personality based on these um, really regressive stereotypes which we should have left well behind. And that's it. Your gender is not your personality. But <laughs> Seriously, this is just an there's a lot of people that treat it that way, though. I mean, our non-binary oh, episode. Well, yeah. if it's not your personality, what is it? Yeah. I was going to say, how, what, how okay. How does this person define gender identity? Where is it? So, hold on. Hold, what is it? I was going to say. Hang on, Ray. Hold on a minute, man. If you're going to go down this road, if you're going to say, oh, it's not your personality, then uh, do we agree that it's about your, your biological sex characteristics? <laughs> <laughs> That's a bridge too far. But yeah, I mean, what what is gender gender identity if it's not intrinsic to your personality? If it's not part of your personality, like, could you separate that out from personality? I don't think you could. No, a lot what of people just seem to treat. Yeah, a lot of people just seem to treat use the word gender when they mean something between a personality, a temperament, and a way of seeking attention from other people. Sorry, like the way that these people use it, even if that's not how they define it, they're. The way the language that they're using is like the traditional, I'm going to use that there, traditional way that we would frame uh, personality types, quirks, and traits. All right. Example of somebody who does not know what they are talking about, and then for some reason has been given credibility and a platform to spread this misinformation on. Trans people deserve better. This video was highly uncomfortable to watch. The fact that somebody was allowed to go on national television on a news platform and share this kind of stuff without even a trans person being present is horrible. The evidence and science out there supports the existence of trans people and supports that trans people both in adulthood and childhood have access to gender affirming healthcare. The only Do thing they though? Uh, you, you see, it's like two thirds of the way there. Well, I would say 100% of the way there because the studies do support that yes, these kids do need assistance, but it's, but when he says that, he means affirmation. Yeah. Yeah. When I say that, I mean maybe affirmation. Maybe they need uh, inter an inter a multidisciplinary team to look at them and make sure that this isn't something that's say, treated elsewhere. This isn't another issue. Th or that the they'll just that naturally desist. I mean... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to keep cutting you off. But uh, that's that's the thing I'm getting at. Like, right? like when he says this, yeah, I agree with the studies that this that those are probably a good thing. I don't agree with you and how you have framed this and set this up and primed uh, me and the rest of your audience to think about what that actually means because I don't think that that's correct. Right. I, I want us to imagine oh. for a moment a study that proposed curing childhood depression with an endless supply of candy. Okay? All you do is you just give kids candy. 
whenever they ask for it. And you ask for results and they report back that they are much more satisfied now that they just have an endless supply of candy. What conclusion do we make from that study? Total oh, bullshit. <laughs> well, mood's definitely increased. Mood is definitely increased. Is it the best pathway forward? Yeah. Diabetes uh, is also in Diabetes is also uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, uh, like this, are, are these... Uh, behavioral uh, issues that might be stemmed from overconsumption are, are these, of uh, calories? Like, I was going to say, are these kids being regularly weighed after they go through these <laughs> and treatments? Like, and that's kind of the... That's what I was getting at earlier. It's this notion that if we just give kids what they want, suddenly they feel better and report feeling better. Almost like kids... And then, it's like, yeah, I think that's an obvious conclusion. It doesn't really get at the heart of the problem, which is what right. kind of what kind of procedures are being done that have permanent effects and how many of the kids who receive these treatments really didn't need it. Right? They went through the process, they're happy with it, but if you rolled back time and you didn't do it, they would have just naturally resolved and gone on without any of those surgeries. Well, and here's another thing, additionally too, that I would think of because this is, this, I mean, this is more specifically specific to your county analogy. But like, after a while, like if all the treatment you're doing is just giving them candy, like just whenever they they ask for it or whatever, they're like starting to get like depressed. Eventually, like that's going to wear off. Eventually, that's going to stop being the solution, and the kids yeah. are going to be like, "Oh, well, I I don't want candy. My tummy hurts." Blah blah blah. Like, eventually, like, it's got to come to a head where it stops working. Yeah, and I think there's evidence that for some people, uh, gender medical care almost acts like the, there's a diminishing return at some point, and some of them will get frustrated with it. I don't think it's a big I would imagine problem, any... But for some of them, it definitely can be. Um, yeah, especially if it's, like, at a time where, like, it, it's a person who's sedentary... Um, and they just glom onto this change and just that's something that they put all their energy into. And it wasn't necessarily the transition themselves that helped them out of that period of their life, but rather putting their energy towards something in a concerted goal. And that's what they needed in their life. And then now that the transition has happened, that that wasn't actually the right thing for them. Yeah, I think there's other things too that could come along with a transition that might lead to more positive developments for a teenager which is like mm -hmm. reconnecting with your parents because you're gonna have to get your parents involved so you're gonna right. have to talk to them more and go figure if you talk to your parents and you're getting support from them you feel better <laughs> and uh you you make Are you your, telling me you to not state your needs and a lot of these kids might have grown up never advocating for themselves they they were probably very shy or quiet and now they're empowered to say, hey, I want this. I have these needs. And people actually take them seriously. I mean, that's got to be a, a, an esteem booster. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Kev, are you telling me that if I, as a child, go to my parents and say that I'm actually a girl now and I want drugs and they tell me, no, the solution is not just to immediately call child services and get put in the foster care system? I would not recommend doing that because you're going to get diddled in the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the stats have anything to say about it. Yeah. Oh lord, you're you're opening yourself up for a diddling. But but hey, my a diddling hormones. like you won't believe. But I got my hormones though. So. Yeah. yeah. Wrong with trans healthcare is that it's painfully underfunded and there is a real lack of access to it for the people that need it. There's such a broad range of evidence out there to show that access to gender affirming care results in positive mental health outcomes. And all major medical associations oppose legislation that would ban access to healthcare for trans children and trans adults. Now, can we please stop letting. Uh, there, guys, there's. There's no coercion. There's no pushing or trying to uh, push people towards the uh, the trans, like into being trans at all. There's there's none of that. Also, the uh, the study or the the research is criminally underfunded, and people ha need to have more access because it's too slow. But nobody's being pushed towards this. It's the the like I said. I mean, if you can is flash it, all the studies you want, but if you're not. Is the it? blatant hypocrisy know. here, the blatant um, hypocrisy of just him, like in the same video, yeah. saying, "Oh, nobody is like trying to push kids to be trans." Also, we need to make it more available because the wait times are too long. Like, shut up. Well, what do you mean by push kids to be trans? 
Because I think there's definitely like we were talking about the online space. There's definitely seems to be at least a jovial atmosphere over the idea that you can make somebody trans, you know, by talking to them. Like there are like there are people like I don't know if I don't know if people are familiar with the Keffels thing that are watching us probably. Go, Go ahead, Ray. Yeah, yeah, but like just specifically using the context of only this video, no outside stuff or whatever. I'm just talking about how this guy said that there were quote quote like criminally long wait lists and stuff. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of a good thing though because you want to be really sure before you uh, start pushing someone forward on this stuff. And in the same breath, he's like saying, well, we need to reduce those wait times because it's like it's a problem. It's like I don't. I don't agree with you. I think that, like, you know, making sure I'd be really uh, confident on moving forward with medical treatments before you go forward with them is very important. Here's where I I see, like, a weird conflict, because they will cite long wait times and all these other things as evidence that no one is being rushed and that no one is falsely claiming to be trans and then they'll say we need to reduce those wait times without realizing that the thing they're advocating for is more likely to result in those things well that's exactly what i'm getting at plus wouldn't wouldn't the long like 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 really long wait times wouldn't that put a lot of pressure on the doctors to be like hey we gotta get these wait times down like if you're if you're pushing on them that way yeah like you said Cobb, that's what they're advocating for so yeah they're just like advocating for things that would actually decrease the quality of care because wait times are very annoying and that's what you get with socialized health care i suppose america um, usa usa but uh yeah if you really push for wait times to be decreased you could be actually cutting into necessary time for mm-hmm. appointments and for consultation and you're just basically putting them on a a big assembly line and i think that's even partly what the cast report was finding yeah there was very very little consultation going on people are just being pushed along well yeah that's that's the thing of yeah that's just the thing i'm getting at like i get it right like i'm i'm using very inflammatory language but like it's just it's so it's so irritating to see them do this in the same strokes yeah. It's in this same 10 minute video here. Yeah. Honestly, there is nothing I can add that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You chose a good video to hop in on. Yeah, I know. There's no, there's no theories. There's no comics. There's no bisexual no. Hitler. Well, <laughs> I, I was waiting on the second video. I was more primed on the uh, LGBT without the T. Right. All right, so let's, let's 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 push it. through. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Transphobes and people who know nothing about the trans community and the trans experience go on and talk about it on television. They are spreading misinformation. They are spreading transphobia. They are fear mongering and they are harming the trans community. If you want to know more about trans people and you want to do a segment about transitioning and the lives of trans people and access to healthcare and all of this stuff, get actual trans people on your show that's it for the video think about giving it a thumb i kind of hate that i feel like that on the show yeah i feel like that puts so much like pressure on the average trans person to like be an expert in all of this stuff and like just this isn't like some people's wheelhouse you know and like i like like, i feel like it just it's just putting undue pressure on just like at the average everyday trans person when you say this kind of stuff doctors well, I mean, okay, further than just that, this guy's fundamentally missing the point of why this this news uh, caster or whatever brought this person on. Uh, England does this a lot. They just they just want a variety of opinions and like people that you may not hear from or like the you know they want the idea is that you get a lot of people with a lot of varying uh, like political views and opinions or extremists even on TV and then you just talk with them. And the idea is is that uh, the educated public will watch this, come to a conclusion and of who is, you know, the most sensible or the most logical or whatever. The idea isn't that like, Oh, we're just going to let this person spout on uninhibited for like 
like, you know, an hour or whatever, uh, just so that we can push uh, this agenda. It's just that we want to uh, allow people to be exposed to these ideas so that they could be then make their own conclusion. Immediately being like, well, you have to have a trans activist in there at the same time would defeat the purpose of that. Yeah. Because yeah, British British news is interesting for that reason. Because even though that country has a pretty bad reputation for free speech, they do really push to have diverse opinions on on programs well, like they, that. Yeah, and unfiltered ones too. Yeah, unfiltered. Which is like the US I think needs that. You know, oh, that these, would be like, we have all these channels <laughs> that's, that's what C -SPAN and they're Collins are for. Yeah, they're extremely uh one directional. Well, that's that's the thing about British curated, news, you know? though. That that's one of the things that they pride themselves about is like the idea that like their their news is very unbiased. Yeah, it's not completely true, but mm. they are they are more objective than uh, what is it? Uh, American news New York reporting. Times. Yeah, <laughs> things like that. CNN, Fox, and NSNBC, CBS, all of them. Yeah. All right. Let's let's get through the last ten seconds of this. I mean, it's just thumbs up. Yeah, I got food. Um, yeah, uh, tip, but no pressure if you just, didn't. Yeah, and yeah, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I'm sorry for getting a bit irate in this one, but it really frustrates me. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Much love. Bye. Well, this will be a How's short that, episode. Tony? Um, video was poo -poo. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. It was, it, was, uh, it was short. It was not very convincing. It wasn't very... It didn't really have much to it. I think we added substance to it in commenting on it, which is good for us. Yeah, yeah we've been we'll see. I, I, for like two hours, and most of it was us talking about research. <laughs> pretty true. And uh, yeah. I probably bored people to death at the beginning <laughs> for like 30 minutes. Hey, so. hey, I, I've, seen our, I've seen some of the other ones that I've been on. Two hours is actually pretty good pacing for yeah. having me on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are a chatty one. You are a chatty one. I am That's sorry. I if I, Look, I'm a chat. I'm a chatty fox. Okay. I gotta right. be. I gotta be more aggressive about uh, designating people to talk. <laughs> so we end up with these, or like two people talk, or three people talk, and then I have two people and haven't said much. But that's well, okay. People forgive us for that. Well, look, yeah. we, we have Amazon all the time because he never talks. Look, 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 uh, we have we have Amazon here because he's great window dressing, right? He's more yeah, appealing he's, than me and my ugly he's face. He's a handsome fella. What a handsome <laughs> guy. God, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still <laughs> upset about that Markiplier picture being fake. <laughs> oh my god. I still, I've been thinking actually, about that this yeah, whole time. You know, it's actually All right, so, his penis. Was it? Oh, right, so <laughs> okay, so wow. really, because I gotta go. Okay. Um, okay. Final, yeah, final thoughts, conclusion. Uh, this this was not okay. This one was honestly not bad. I mean, it's not good, but I've seen much worse with you guys. This guy, yeah, uh, this was I, like mid mid tier. This is just a person yeah. that you know reads reads articles that agree with them. And after seeing much. the whole thing all the way through, I think that maybe he's just kind of ignorant on the topic. I think yeah. he's just really passionate uh, about a lot of people are ignorant this. on the topic. I mean, there's probably th I mean, there's definitely things that we're ignorant about that we're not addressing. You know, everybody's kind of but, ignorant on the topic, but I think we're closest to the yeah, target. I, 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 I <laughs> closer hope than some. Be people. on the right side of history. Are we the bad guys? <laughs> the bad I don't know. Guys. I don't know. I think about that often. Uh, I don't know, but like, uh, yeah, but like, his ignorance is it is quite annoying, especially when he says stuff like we were talking about at the end of the video. But other than that, this this is fine. It was relatively inoffensive. Yeah. All right. I think that's pretty much my feelings, too. Mm -hmm. I think I probably oh. talked the most. <laughs> my feeling is the video was very boring. Yeah. And I disliked it for that reason. <laughs> boring and pointless and uninteresting and uh, un unsatisfying. Yeah. There's nothing really funny about it or interesting. Un yeah. Unsatisfying in the way that when you find out a uh, C tier internet celebrity's nudes are fake, like that yeah. kind of level of disappointment. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. <laughs> was yeah. it cut or uncut? Right. It was on. Peace. It was on cut. I have to go get a eat. sweater. Bye. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. All right, Amazil, take yeah. us out. Bye bye bye, everybody. <laughs> bye, bye bye, boys. Bye bye.